Okay, uh, so before we start our tutorial, I just wanted to show you this image uh, because in here you'll find the key to understand how displacement maps work not only for Lightweave 3 d but to any other 3D software package in the world. Uh, the key to this is to understand that a displacement map is nothing more than black and white information where whatever is black is not going to be displaced and whatever is white is going to be completely displaced. So now that we have seen this, uh, let's go to Lightweight and start our tutorial. So see you there. Okay people, so uh, let's begin our tutorial. The first step will be <coughs> to get the procedural texture from Lightweight. So in order to do that we're going to create flat square. Right. So uh, we can keep this uh, in one meter. The only thing we will have to remove is the height because it's going to be completely flat. And that's it. So now that we have our super awesome square, let's just app apply a material. So let's call this procedural. And let's go to the surface editor, procedural texture, and let's open up the procedural, the, the texture editor. So let's change the layer type to procedural texture and we can keep uh, the turbulence for now. I think we, we're gonna end up using this one. The only tweak we're gonna do to this texture is that we have to change the color uh, that at the moment it's something really uh, similar to the default color to a black. So we can see here in the preview that now we are seeing some uh, contrast. So this is good. Let's save this object. Let's call this procedural. Now let's send this to layout. Okay, so we are in layout. And the main thing we're going to do here is we're going to change the position. We want the camera to be perfect, perfectly aligned uh, to the flat surface, so the distance is going to be uh, zero. And now we have to rotate the camera so the camera is facing the square. So uh, let's change the pitch uh, to 90 degrees. And now we just have to pull it up. Okay, so now we're seeing here that we're getting uh, like a complete view of our uh, flat surface. So let's ch change this to BPR. And the most important thing is going to be that at this point we have to, deter to determine how big is going to be our texture. Since we are going to be creating a really huge terrain, the bigger the texture is, the better. So uh, let's tweak the camera properties here and I will tell you to go at least with a 5k texture so let's change those values here we don't have to tweak anything else because uh, at the moment we just want to tweak to to get the texture where this is going to be uh, our base and let's go to the surface editor once again and in here uh, since we're looking at how the texture is going to look, we, we just want to tweak this a little bit so we get something uh, slightly, you know, similar to the things we want to achieve. So let's tweak this to 0.5. I like these nice variations over here. I think we can make a river path, like over here, maybe some sort of lake over here. Let's see if tweaking the position will uh, well look at this one. I actually like this one better. I can make a like a lake here and a uh, different river path over here. So let's use this one. And well basically what we have to do here is just to render this image. So uh, this is not going to take long because uh, we don't have anything else in the scene. And well, it's actually taking longer than I expected. So 
I'm gonna pause the video and I'll come back to you once the render is done. Okay, so we are back and the render surprisingly finished five seconds after I paused the video. So, uh, well, this is the render and uh, the next step will be to save this image and open up this image in Photoshop. So let's do that and I'll see you in Photoshop in a, in a second. Okay, people, so we are in Photoshop now. Uh, I already imported the procedural texture we just created in Lightwave and now we're just going to proceed to create the river path and the lake so in order to do that we're going to grab okay we're going to grab the brush tool and uh, in order to get the river path in at the proper altitude we want to sample from the darkest color in our image so at the moment we see here that we have like dark spots over here so we can grab any of the colors around here so let's make sure we have our layer selected let's sample the color and uh, we need to make sure uh, of one more thing uh, the brush has to be uh, one of the faded brushes so we have to make sure that the hardness is set to zero and in my case I'm going to use a 600 pixel uh, diameter brush and we need to make sure that the opacity is not set to 100% we're going to set this around 40% okay now we can start painting our river path so you don't have to be a master painter I'm not a master painter so I'm just making sure that we have this over here it's going to be our river path and let's sample from this uh, dark spot over here and let's create the small lake let's connect this spots over here okay so I'm just painting out over here okay so let's let's say we have uh, something similar to what we want uh, the next step will be to blend these edges over here because if we leave this image this way when we make the, the displacement in light wave this is going to be a little bit weird because uh, the displacement is going to jump from this altitude to this altitude over here so it's going to look uh, a little bit funky so we have to plant these edges over here and in order to do that we're going to keep the brush uh, you know with the same uh, same width uh, everything same color but the only thing we, we need to change is the opacity so let's set the opacity to around 15% and we're just going to paint over those edges so we have some sort of a uh, transition from the bottom of the river to the let's call this the coast okay same over here so we don't have a like a really hard a uh, tra transition over there okay okay that's enough um let's add a little bit of a curves adjustment I just wanna have a little bit more contrast and the last step will be to to add a blur filter so let's use a uh, Gaussian blur uh, two pixel blur will be just you know enough okay so uh, I'm gonna save this image out. Uh, we can call this image. Let's call it a displacement map. Let's save it as a JPEG. Okay. And now we're going to go to to the Lightweight Modeler. So I'm gonna launch the Modeler, and I'll see you there. Alright, so we are back in Nightwave. Uh, now we're going to create a 
actually the surface that we're going to be displacing in the layout so uh, in order to do that we're going to need uh, once again a flat surface, a flat square, so let's use the box tool and this is going to be a really big terrain so let's change the width to one kilometer since this is going to be flat it's not going to have any height and the depth is going to be one kilometer as well now uh, in order to displace the surface we need to add subdivisions to it so uh, about the subdivisions uh, the more subdivisions you have the more accurate and detailed is going to be the displacement but it is also going to eat out all of your memory so you have to think of your computer power in order to do this uh, I'm going to be a little bit conservative here so I'm going to add just a hundred subdivisions in the x-axis any subdivisions in the in the y-axis are useless because we don't have any height and we're going to add a hundred subdivisions in the z-axis as well so let's finish this operation and before we go to layout we need to sub patch this so just press your tab key and it's going to be sub patch and let's save this polygon out so let's save the object uh, let's call this displacement okay now we save our displacement texture let's uh, go to layout okay people so we are in layout uh, let's uh, tweak the position of our camera make sure we're watching at least uh, the terrain so this way we're going to see if we are actually doing something or not So that's fine. Now we're going to select our surface. Let's open up the object properties panel. Let's change the sub patch level from 3 to 6 and let's change the subdivision order from first to last. You have to make sure every time you make a displacement the subdivision order has to change from first to last. So uh, now open up the deform tab and let's add a displacement map so we just click in the texture editor for the displacement map and we're going to select the texture we just uh, created so let's open up the displacement image we just created in Photoshop uh, we're going to project it uh, from the y-axis and we have to automatic size this so it actually fits the size the complete size of the terrain now as you can see here there's nothing going on and that's because our texture amplitude is not big enough so we have to crank this up you know up to 500 so now we can see the results over here let's close this up so you can take a look at this so now we're seeing something okay let's try eliminating the pixel blending and I think we can call this done right now if you want to tweak uh, your displacement map inside of Lightwave there are several ways you can go about that the first one will be actually to tweak it here in the displacement map options uh, you can change the amplitude right you can increase it you can use it a lower one I'm going to stick to, to 500 uh, amplitude and the other one will be to tweak the image inside of LiveWave so you just press F6 and you'll get the image editor over here and you have you know some options over here so if you want to increase the contrast you can do it inside the editor and you're going to get some different results right so that will be up to you, up to what you want to achieve. Uh, I feel comfortable with the result we have so far, so I'm going to save this object. Uh, now, we are not uh, going to be using the displacement, or we're not going to have uh, a displaced um, surface in the final scene, because that is going to eat out 
some of our computer resources. So uh, in order to save computer resources, we're going to save this as a transformed object, right? So uh, to do that, we just go here to File, Save. Save the transformed object. It's over here. And we're going to call this terrain. This is going to be our terrain. Okay, so I'm going to open up uh, our terrain thing in Modeler and I'll see you there. Alright, so uh, I just opened up uh, the model we just created in, in the Modeler. Um, you can see that we have some some really nice detail on our terrain and that we created our river path on our small lake uh, back in Photoshop so uh, I have I hope this was uh, useful to all of you uh, don't forget to check out the next tutorial in the next tutorial we're going to be creating all the textures uh, for our terrain and well if you have any questions just let me know uh, I'll see you next time.